Good morning, Taurus. Hi. Welcome to Project Fev, Tarot and More. I'm Sharon, Intuitive Empath. I'm going to bring you guys a special bonus reading for the month of May instead of doing an additional love reading because I don't feel um, from spirit that those energies have changed or shifted just, just yet or haven't shifted enough that it warrants doing an additional reading. Um, and I still wanted to put some content up on the channel for you guys to, to kind of um, participate in and still get some benefit from. So um, what came forward to do for the, for the month, the rest of May and June, okay, so this is going to cover the next six to eight weeks of energy um, as the planets transit in different signs right now and the way that they're sextile and square, uh, Venus, Aries, I've got some Neptune involvement and Uranus involvement there and, and the energies right now are so incredibly challenging for a lot of the signs that I just wanted to put some content up on my channel. So if you guys should feel really desperate and there are going to be some moments like that because we're going to have deep, deep triggers, you guys, deep inner pains, um, things that you guys might be blindsided by because you don't even know that it's there, things that you, you thought you reconciled and maybe under the old paradigm you did but they're bringing, they're, they're, it's coming back up to reconcile under the new paradigm um, which is with sans religion okay so really we're in this um, energistic paradigm where people are are coming back to the understanding that there is something bigger than them going on but they don't want to necessarily affiliate with religious ideations or interpretations of ancient texts okay so um, there's a lot of things that are shifting that seem like they're little subtleties or they're, they're really small and they're not. They're great big energies, you guys. So you might be feeling um, tension, neck, back, shoulders, uh, headaches. I've been having eye and vision changes um, where my, my astigmatism is, um, you can see it on this side actually, is acting wonky and being funny. So I had to get my glasses today. So if there's a glare, I really apologize that I can't, you know, look at you and interact with you more personally because the glasses and, and of course the camera creates another barrier. But, um, you know, we'll just, we'll do our best to, to, you know, keep our connect connectivity from a distance and definitely relay that energistically. Okay. So, um, what I've been led by spirit to do is a 10 card, um, life, uh, spread life reading spread five on the top five on the bottom um, outcome cards relate to each other there's groupings of the cards together and then we'll get some clarifiers okay to find out how what the experience is that most recently happened um, leading up to the events of now and then all of how the future is going to play out as a result of that it'll show us where in the next six weeks you'll be triggered and what the timeline is if it's going to be right at the beginning for some of the signs it will be right at the beginning um, for you guys it might be different so let's see how these energies play out it's going to um, give you a trigger point which is going to tell you the main point of resistance see that the cards don't even want to behave in attunement today like shuffling has been a problem I haven't even been able to cascade shuffle on the table successfully without lots of flipping and, and there's just so much active energy, you guys. So much rando energy. Interference is what I'm calling it. There's lots of interference and it's okay that there is. Okay, this is how major transformation takes place. This is how we test whether or not we've accepted the downloads and worked through glitches. Okay, so it's almost like it, it was like, the, you know, you did the, um, the software first or the hardware first which was the you know the more technical part of the download you did the upload of the software and now they're running the program they've launched it and you know it's the first couple of weeks of launch into some of these new paradigms you're seeing that play out by um, you know they're attempting to overturn Roe versus Wade we're, we're resuming and recycling a lot of old 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 issues like what all this stuff coming back up for review and, and to reconcile. Um, we have, uh, okay, so narcissistic is the new fat, apparently, because for the last decade or so, um, people have been so anti-fat that they've been 
There's been hatred towards fat people. Well, narcissists, you guys are the new targets. There's going to be a lot of hatred and a lot of malice and a lot of um, negative and abusive treatment um, that's going to be refocused uh, onto narcissism. And here's the, here's the thing. I think that the collective may have found a target that's not going to be able to uh, restitute itself as easily as a lot of other people, you know, like disabilities and the prejudices that they suffered. You know, we were able to show disability in a different light. Narcissism is going to be a tough one, you guys. It's going to be a tough one to reconcile. And the reason why I say that, because um, Taurians, you guys, along with Gemini, are the two astrological signs. Um, so it's Taurus, uh, Gemini, and Cancer that show the most narcissistic trait. I won't say NPD because that's a psycho psychological diagnosis. And I'm not a psychologist or a psychiatrist, although I am, I do come from a, a significant nursing background. Um, there is education in psych and child development, and I have my own theories on narcissism and how it develops um, that I've seen play out in the cultural paradigm and the connections that I've made with the new downloads that I've gotten from Spirit. I might make a video on that. Let me, go, let me know if you guys are interested in a video on um, the collective abuses that take place that, that um, kind of contribute to narcissistic trait and uh, narcissistic egocentrism and the idea of how that is affecting society right now and what we're seeing as far as what I'm going to go ahead and strongly call white male privilege. Okay, there's always been a sense of privilege, but there is a significant disconnect right now uh, between the masculine and the feminine in the form of white male privilege, and it is causing such a disturbance. Women are angry, and men are scratching their heads wondering why. Uh, I was I shared a TED Talk on my... Uh, social media my Facebook page. Oh, that's what I'm going to do this week you guys. I finally got my computer up and running um, My the computer desk behind me finally got that put together So I'm gonna go on and start my Facebook page and my Instagram account this week So look to that. Okay, and then you know, let's let's get into some poppers here because I think that's enough I've, I've been ranting for like seven minutes here Taurus. I guess uh, the energy that I'm picking up for you guys is there's some resistance, like denial. Just don't want to deal with it. You'd rather talk about something else. Um, what's coming through, too? Got the Knight of Cups with the Two of Wands in reverse. Okay, Knight of Cups has come out first. Yeah, Two of Wands in reverse is really letting me know that there's something emotional some emotion, something you're feeling in the emotional realm that you are not making a decision about, okay? Okay, so we've got the five of wands in reverse with the two of cups in reverse, okay? It might be a relationship, a soulmate, a love partnership, okay? Um, now, for a lot of people in the collective right now, you guys, um, the cards are coming out mostly in reverse, okay? It's not a yes or no when cards are in reverse. It's not negative, positive energy. Um, sometimes for me as a reader, um, intuitively, the cards come out in reverse when it's more self-focused. Okay, so when, so when you're taking these energies and you're being asked by the universe to self-focus these energies, a lot of your cards will come out in the reverse. And it'll, re it'll actually represent that energy. Here's the Knight of Pentacles energy. Okay, that came out in a lot of the other readings as well. So that's part of the collective energy. Here's the moon in reverse for you guys. Also a collective energy card right now because it's coming out in everybody's reading. Um, yeah, so when you're being asked to, you know, do the self-reflection work. Sorry, you guys, hold on. Ace of Wands in reverse. Yeah, that's, that is uh, directly in line with the Two of Wands. So you've got the Ace in reverse, you've got the Two of Wands in reverse, you've got the Eight of Wands in the upright, you've got Wands, 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 Wands galore. Okay? All right, Taurus. Ten of Cups has come out. So you guys are certainly focused on uh, your happiness and the ultimate happiness. Oh, and you guys got two end cards. Page of Wands in reverse and Ten of Swords. 
So you guys are working through what I see, some very challenging energies, and it looks like um, what's going to be um, what you guys are being called to focus on is your relationship with yourself and self-love internally um, so that you can come out of yourself externally and express love in a healthy way, okay? Um, five of Wands with the Two of Cups in reverse, okay, particularly... Um, when you're talking about the two of wands and reverse energy as far as like the most recent past energies I feel like the main issue here is there's such a great deal of inner conflict um, that you find as soon as you get into a love relationship or as soon as you have affection towards somebody or feel affection towards somebody sorry for the um, for the uh, little text messages there um, so essentially I do I do pick up this is self-love learning how to love yourself and and I do feel like you're having some conflict reconciling your masculine energy if you're a feminine or your feminine energy if you're a masculine okay so I feel like you're having a hard time unifying these energies within you and learning how to function um, from both of them equally as one, okay? I think, Taurus, what's happening right now is you still view them as two very separate entities, two very separate energies, and that you need to bring them together somehow and make them one, and that happens on the inside first. It happens with the self first. When you unify those and you understand and accept that is your truth, that you are both masculine and feminine from within yourself, okay? Then you can express yourself through the masculine or feminine energies into your environment and into your interactions with other people, and it is vital. So I, what I see here is that it's affecting your ability to take action in the real world in a linear way, okay? So the most recent past, we've got the two of wands in reverse with the um, knight of cups. So the reason why I feel like this is a relationship for you is I feel like there's a partner or soulmate situation that you guys have been involved in. This is not a new person. I don't see this as a new energy. Um, I do feel like what this, the point of this relationship um, that you've been experiencing, which is probably in um, separation right now and maybe even no contact because I don't see... I don't see any swords energy here. I don't see any um, page energy here. I don't see anything represented in the past situation. Okay, so what you guys, so your trigger already took place from within this relationship. So this is a significant person that's been in your life and it doesn't have to be a love partnership. It could be someone that you had a close soul connection with and Taurus, you did something, okay? Or you feel like they did something and you're, you're, you've come to a crossroads where you either need to move away from this person or move towards this person, okay? And, and it looks like emotionally you guys want to move towards the person, but you haven't, okay? You haven't taken action. And the reason why you haven't taken action, I do believe, is that classic stubborn Taurus pride, okay? Now, a lot of Taurians get a reputation or have a reputation for being stubborn. I don't know that stubborn is necessarily the most accurate word. It's not inaccurate. It's just, I do believe that, that Torians struggle um, to accept new truth because there's a great deal of trust and assimilation and um, slow movement towards those, those new assimilations and acceptances. Um, because you guys feel like you have to reject a certain part of what you identified as being or who you identified being from a past paradigm that no longer serves you. And that's the part that you struggle with. It's not the new information. The new information makes sense and you want to assimilate it. You have to remove, release, or purge the old stuff in order to make room for the new stuff and it's that part of it. You resist releasing the old stuff you want to take everything you want everything to go with you and that creates emotional baggage psychological issues anxiety issues that ultimately rebound into depression that swing back into anxiety and rebound into depression and then you go through these cycles 
Um, and if you have an external locus of responsibility, like a relationship where you're being triggered, so you're blaming the person for making you feel a certain way, um, and then it triggers this internal conflict of anxiety and depression, and this cycle plays out over and over again, here's something to kind of uh, have you look at the bigger picture. If this is happening with this person and only with this person, then, then chances are this person has something to do with that, and it's true. But if this is an experience that you've had with several different people, maybe many different people, chances are, Taurus, you have more to do with what's playing out in a cyclic way than what this, this new person, this person that this represents right here is. Okay, so externalizing all of the blame onto this person and not taking any internal responsibility or holding yourself accountable to your actions because you only want them to acknowledge the way that it made you feel but not being empathetic towards your partner or towards another person and seeing things from their point of view um, is, is the reason why you're not moving forward. It's the reason why you feel stuck. It's the reason why the relationship hasn't moved forward. It's the reason why in the relationship you play the cycle out frustratingly over and over and over again. There is something, Taurus, that you need to acknowledge about what you did that caused this either by your choice, by your ignorance, that okay, everybody has that, okay, there's no judgment. Um, everybody has human moments and we you know, engage in human moment behaviors. Maybe um, classic Taurian traits that you might be struggling with and not realize that you're doing is possessiveness. Um, a type of perfectionism that's control. Um, I've, I've heard of Taurians literally like ha needing to have such a, an amount of control that they're like, okay, you can, go, you can go have a cigarette break, but only seven minutes. And then you gotta come back. Because it, you know, if you know when your partner's coming back, then you can allow them to separate from you and leave your site, you know? Like, it's almost like object permanence doesn't exist for you entirely. Okay, so there's an anxiety that takes place when you don't feel like you're in control. Okay, so I do believe that, that that's what's going on, is you're trying, you have that out of control feeling because you can't reconcile the way that you feel about this person. You're, you're denying it. You're denying moving forward because you have to do the right thing and there's only one right thing to do. And you're like, no, I'm not doing it. I'm not doing it, okay? Which is okay if that's your choice, but understand that it's a step-by-step -step process through this cycle and if you don't work through the cycle, you're gonna remain stuck. Nothing's going to get better, nothing's going to change, nothing's going to move forward. Okay, you're the, you're the action point. Okay, Taurus, you're the action point. Okay, so this is why we have the Ace of Wands with the Moon in reverse. Okay, I do believe that, that you guys may understand or see this pretty clearly and understand some type of clarity was gained, okay, or something was brought to your attention and you're not acting on it. Okay, Taurus has a... a and, and this is, these are generalizations about the astrological sign. If that part of it doesn't resonate with you, I completely understand. Um, but as far as a life reading is concerned for a Taurus, if you're a younger Taurus, it's probably Taurus Sun, a Taurus Ascendant. Okay, and right now if you have Jupiter in Taurus, then you're probably going to get a lot out of this reading. Vedic Astrology, okay, so if you don't know what your Vedic placements are, then you can go to soulmatestars.com and use the Vedic Chart Creator to find out what your ascendant and your sun are in Vedic sidereal. Um, with this love relationship, it would be Venus and Taurus. You're gonna get a lot out of this reading about how you're interacting with this other person. Okay, if you're an older, more mature, experienced Taurian, it's probably gonna be your moon sign. If you have a moon in Taurus, you're gonna get a lot out of this reading. It's probably gonna resonate with you. Okay, so just keep in mind those placements too. Um, but yeah, so, so something's been brought to light. It's been made known, you see it, but I feel like there's a trust issue with it. Like you don't trust it fully, so you haven't taken any action on it. That is about to change. <laughs> because uh, through the ending of this cycle, you are gonna be moving very swiftly towards your happiness. Okay, so as you reconcile this moon energy and you're kind of like, yeah, I see the truth. Yeah, I see the truth. Yeah, I see it. I get it. Oh, wait. Oh, 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 you're going to be like, boom, boom. OK, 
okay? This person's my happiness. I really miss them. I really want them. I really need them. I need to do the work. I need to figure this out. And it's going to light a fire under your ass. Thank you, Aries, because there's a lot of Aries placements right now. And then, of course, I do believe in sidereal or Vedic astrology. Sun moved into Taurus. Okay, so, so when Sun's in Taurus, it's going to illuminate the parts of your linear life that you're still struggling with. And it looks like relationships for some of you as part of it. And maybe not just romantic relationships, maybe any type of one-on-one -on -one intimate relationship. You guys are struggling kind of with the intimate parts of it because that's the part that you have to go with the flow with with your partner and you have to really compromise and work through that. It is not your way or the highway when it comes to that, that level of compatibility with somebody else, okay? And I think for Tauruses, it, it, it doesn't, you don't mean for it to be your way or the highway, but because you can't or struggle to or have a hard time working through your anxieties, Okay, you project that onto the other person and make it their responsibility to not trigger your anxiety, and that's not okay. Okay, that's a lot of responsibility. It's a huge distraction for this person. They can't focus on what they need to do in their own life, so it becomes possessive. Okay, and then you get clingy, and then it's kind of like a, I don't know what to do without you, and, and then it's obsession. Okay, and this other person is just like, oh, God, I can't do this anymore. It's just so heavy. Okay, so here's what's going to happen. With this other person, there's going to be, they're still going to work through the anxiety of what they're experiencing because of your denial and your hesitation at the beginning of this scenario, okay? I don't want to say your because it sounds like blame. I don't mean it in the, in the way of blame, but it is a result of the choice that you made. And maybe you're not seeing that or hadn't see, seen that, but sometime in the middle of this process, so maybe not by the end of May, but by early June, you guys will have absolute clarity on this situation. It will become absolutely clear that you're the one that needs to take action and you haven't been. Okay, you need to choose one of the two of the wands and you haven't been. You haven't been doing that. You've been doing this instead. Internal conflict. Okay, I know this person loves me. I, I feel it. I, you know, like I know, I know they love me. I'm going to let them come to me or whatever you've reconciled in your head. Kind of, I'm not going to go. It's, it is, there is a little bit of a, a resistance. It, I'm not going to call it stubborn because it's not really stubborn. It's not like you're so fixed in your own opinion because you know what the right thing to do is, or you will at some point early June, it'll be clear that the right thing to do, you're not doing it. You didn't do the right thing or, or, you haven't done the right thing and you need to. So I do think that you're going to, um, with a great deal of anxiety, um, after a great deal of anxiety, because it's gonna become clear that you need to make movement towards this person in order to reconcile or rectify the situation, but you're gonna have a full on, oh, excuse my language, shit. How do I fix this? What is the right thing to do at this point? Because I pretty much blew it. Yeah, that was me. Well, crap, well darn, okay? Um, so, now what? Okay, so let's get some um, advice cards and clarifiers. We're still doing good for time. I'm trying to keep these videos within 30 minutes because I have to do so many for the extra bonus. So let's get clarification spirit right to the end here for Taurus. Ten of Wands energy with the Ten of Swords energy in the upright. So yeah, you're closing that all out. Closing it out, finishing out this cycle. Should you reconcile it this way? Which is, I see clearly what I did or how I contributed to this or the choice that I made that caused this that caused us to go into separation and no communication. And I take full responsibility for it, and I know that I'm the one that needs to act because it was, it was my, it's my lesson to learn to come forward out of love and the heart and spirit of reconciliation, no matter who I think is to blame or who's wrong, okay? This is the energy that you're going to be moving into if you make the decision to move forward with this relationship and reconcile. And the benefit that you're gonna get, the lesson that you will have learned, 
is how to manage some of your anxiety okay, without someone else taking action, learning how to take the correct action, because the Page of Wands is really kind of like a player, a little bit of a player, player um, flirty. Okay, so the Knight of Wands is typically also the player player of the deck, but the Page of Wands is, is how it all gets started, you guys. The Page of Wands is the little playful um, energy that isn't very serious, and then shit just got real. Because <laughs> you have the Ten of Wands and the um, Ten of Swords. So your guys' lesson is you're going to have to do the hard work. Okay, you're going to have to come forward in a way that maybe doesn't necessarily jive with, like I said, your conventional way of doing things, okay? But you're not going to get results. You're not going to move forward. This relationship is not going to move forward, Taurus, until you guys do the work. Yeah. Here's the death card. You could be dealing with a Scorpio, okay? This has come out uh, for the clarifiers for the Two of Cups and the Five of Wands. Okay, so you have all of these cards in reverse, which means you're still working through the energy of this cycle. Okay, so what's the other card? Five of Wands. So you're, you're in a cycle of transformation. That's what the death card is, and that's what Scorpio is. Yeah. Queen of Cups. Okay. How do I express my emotional self in a balanced and healthy way? And this, I feel, has to do with healing within yourself so that you also have a healthy acceptance of somebody else's love. That's what helps create standards and boundaries in a relationship that are healthy, not just for you, okay, but for your partner, understanding that part of respecting and loving them is allowing them to feel comfort and secure, not in the ways that you think they should feel that way, but in the ways that they do, okay? So it's about partnership and working together as a team, okay? So um, this Knight of Pentacles energy, no, we're gonna do the Two of Wands in reverse. What are you guys really struggling through? Oh, uh, I hope that this isn't third party situation. I hope that's not what the Two of Wands means, that you're choosing between one or another person. Because I really feel, well, maybe it is. Let me not impart any of my own judgment here, okay? Third party energy, I do feel like it's you and two other people. And you have to choose between one or the other, and you're not. You're still kind of playing around. Maybe that's why we've got the Page of Wands here. you got to stop playing with the flirty energy, and you have to pick one. You have to pick one in love. All right, and I feel like you've got the you've got your your options. You've got the Queen of Swords or the Queen of Cups. Which one are you going to choose? Okay, they both opt. They both offer very strong energies. Okay, so the Queen of Cups, yes, she's more emotional and she's you know more empathetic and caring and giving in that way. Um, and you'll definitely feel comfort and loved, um, but you might not grow in that relationship, okay? If, it's in, if, if there's a lack in, of balance in you, the Queen of Cups can, in an unhealthy way, or the shadow self of the Queen of Cups is enabling, okay? Enabling you to continue to be unhealthy and uh, not meet your own needs, okay? Queen of Swords, um, yeah, she's kind of cold and distant, or it seems so, but the Queen of Swords speaks her truth and uses words of affirmation. So this, this Queen's love language is probably acts of service, okay? Or, I'm um, sorry, um, physical affection, and probably wants to receive acts of service. And the, the Queen of Swords energy is probably words of affirmation. She probably likes to share ideas and, and talk and communicate more. Okay, and um, what's behind her? Ten of, not, uh, this is supposed to be the nine of swords, but I think that these nu Roman numerals are transposed for whatever reason. So yeah, and, and that mimics your ten of swords in the outcome. So whoever she is, she, her, her energy is represented throughout the entire reading, okay? I say her, uh, don't, don't necessarily under, understand that if, if uh, you're a female watching, it's not, this could be like a, masculine energy and you're choosing between the two and it's really maybe you have to choose between do you want to embody the queen of swords energy or the queen of cups energy 
do you want to remain um, this cold, um, distant type of person, or do you want to come forward in warmth and receptivity, okay, and, and initiate? Okay, so that's what I feel here. And I feel like there's a lot of um, overthinking going on as a result. Which way do I go? Which one do I choose? Blah, blah, blah. All of that inner dialogue that takes place when you're trying to make a choice and you're being indec indecisive. Okay, so Knight of Pentacles. Okay. We've got the three cards. They've come out in this order. Um, the This one was reversed. We've got the Ace of Coin. So I think you're, you're thinking about making a linear offer. Um, one of like, what's coming through is like real. Okay, so it, it, it feels like you're making a real decision to make things real or tangible between the two of you, okay? And if it's received well, I think you're gonna move forward with it, okay? Because we've got the five of coins, but it's in reverse. You guys already had your tower moment. I think the tower was in April. Okay, so whatever happened between you and this person seemingly happened with the older energy or the energy that was still kind of ruminating in April. And then you guys have the transformation card again in the upright. Okay, so part of moving forward is accepting the transformation Okay, so you're going to have to work through your internal self energies first, Taurus, before you can get to the aha moment and then moving forward with this other person, okay? So, uh, moon with the ace of wands. What's going to become absolutely clear for Taurus? Absolutely clear. What's going to be absolutely clear for Taurus? Ace of Cups with the Ace of Swords, okay? So what's going to be absolutely clear is how you feel about the person and um, what your truth is, who this person mean, who, what this person means to you in your life. That's going to become absolutely, absolutely clear. And then you're going to figure out, you're going to create a plan on what to do about getting them back, reconciling with them, something like that with those kinds of energies. Ten of Cups, Eight of Wands. Um, what do you want to tell us about this? The Chariot. This is travel. Are you guys in a long-distance relationship, maybe? You guys need to board a plane, travel across the ocean. Um, sometimes the Chariot represents travel. Yep. Sometimes it's the energy of being a, the champion in the relationship, like a gladiator. Okay, and then we already did the clarification for the last set of cards, so we're going to go to the advice card now, Spirit. Okay, where can Taurus place the focus of their energy to get the best results? Channeling and transforming this energy, transmuting this energy into something productive for this cycle. Where can they place their focus? Soul time. <clears throat> this is a new card for me. I haven't had this one show itself from the deck. So let's see what this one is all about. How exciting. Soul time. The frequency of soul time asks us to allow the possibility of a new reality to emerge. Wow, you guys, if that isn't confirmation that everything in this reading was absolutely spot on for you, one that embraces the concept that while the corporeal body is mortal, the soul is timeless, limitless, and infinite. Yeah, soulmate, you guys. Some of you might still be in denial that soulmates even exist. 
but I believe that you're dealing with a soul-based relationship or maybe a twin flame and you guys are having a hard time accepting the paradigm or the existence of that paradigm in your reality. As part of a duality-based world, and I don't, I don't necessarily think that we are in the immediate thought process of duality anymore. I think we're starting to evolve in our thinking to um, believe more of a polarity because as we unify or as we experience unification, we realize we were never separate to begin with. <laughs> it's kind of like in those movies where it was like they were at a distance and they you know, missed each other so much and then they realized love was here all along. That type of thing, yeah. So um, the concept of time has been defined throughout human history in a linear or linearity with past, present, future. Um, that's 3D paradigm, which is only happening in the world in one dimension. Uh, we look back at, or not one dimension, but only up to the third dimension, which is still very much worldly. We look back at where we came from, apply lessons learned to our present, and move forward with expectations that are derived from the past. So you guys are going to have to, like I said, you're going to have to reconcile releasing the past to make room for the present. Okay. Linear time has been comprehensible and has made our future somewhat predictable, which is something that you guys really like. So moving away from that paradigm of conventional belief into something new and, and kind of unexperienced or un, un, unactualized in your life might, might pose a significant challenge for your, your brain processing. The story of our human history is told from the viewpoint that we are born into this world once and leave when we physically die. A very straightforward story, particularly for an earth sign. Now that we are awakening into a consciousness of much larger story than a singular lifetime on earth and a defined three-dimensional reality, we slowly start to realize that time as we knew it no longer applies. Yeah, you were, you were timeless. Timeless, timeless, timeless. Soul time means having access to all the experiences that the soul has been through, is going through, and will go through all in any given moment that we choose. So it's a great power, but very much like in Spider-Man, with great power comes great responsibility. And I feel cheesy for even saying that, but it really does apply. It's very relevant, you guys. What circumstances and experiences have you created for yourself so you can evolve towards your highest expression? Yeah, soul time. You guys are on divine time. You're on soul time, okay? So it's all happening and unfolding in the exact time that it's supposed to. And remember that this is all meant to be as a, as a um, bigger picture. Okay, there's a bigger picture going on here. And as you step back and, and away from the situation, you start to see that this isn't about your particular pride or the other person's pride or who wins. It's not about who wins. You know, it's about loving each other, coming back together, and creating the life that you guys want together. Okay, it's all about this energy right here. So I hope that helped you guys. You guys definitely got a little bit more of a longer reading. Not really. I think I ranted for the first 10 minutes of your reading and hijacked it a little bit, which is funny because you're uh, not necessarily this collective group of Taurians, but the love reading was hijacked as well. So while you guys are kind of laying low here, figuring all this out, you know, the world is happening and you're kind of missing it. That's okay. You'll figure it out. I see that energy for you. All right. Well, thank you guys for tuning in and listening in. Sorry, I'm a little bit kind of um, tired still. I'm waking up. Um, I don't know if you guys are experiencing this in the energy, but last night there was like a lot of low rumbling in the air, but there's no thunderstorm kind of going on. It was really odd how I was experiencing it. So I didn't really sleep because the kinetic energy was so intense last night. So there was a lot of tossing and turning. Um, until I finally just was like, you know what? It doesn't matter if I sleep, <laughs> which is funny because I kind of reconciled this last night. I was like, I don't need to sleep. I'm not on a 24 hour clock. This is soul time. You know, 
I'll get an opportunity to make up the sleep later at another time or I can sleep when I'm dead is what they say, right? I think I've even said that before too. <laughs> All right, you guys. So I hope that this helps you work through these intense energies. If you want a specific personal love, uh, love reading or um, elaborating more on these energies as they unfold or as you find the trigger happens and you're struggling with any aspect of this part of your journey, go ahead and reach out to me at projectfevtarot at gmail.com. And just send me a little snippet um, to let me know kind of what your situation is or what you really want me to focus on. And I can do a very personal, very specialized, very customized reading for you guys, okay? With um, very specific things to do and maybe even provide you some uh, resources on how to manage and maybe how to reconcile and what might help you reconcile this stuff for yourself or heal, purge, whatever it is that you need, okay? Just reach out to me, open the dialogue, and let's see where it goes from there, okay? Thanks for tuning in. Don't forget to click like and subscribe for the channel, okay, you guys? Thank you so much for being here. Namaste.